Um, let me also take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, WSO2 for providing uh, me with this opportunity to share a little bit of our transformation journey, our digital transformation journey, uh, and how uh, um, WSO2 has also supported in this uh, uh, very much and um, a little bit of the success stories. Today, uh, during this presentation, uh, for those of you who don't know that much about Ethisalat, um, just, um, I'll just share a brief of who we are and what we do, uh, and a little bit about Smiles, which is the um, platform that we uh, digitally transformed with the support of WSO2, a little bit of the journey uh, of Smiles, uh, and a brief on the functional and technical overview. Um, also, obviously, the WSO2 engagement, uh, how uh, the API manager of WSO2 supported us in this course, uh, the identity server, and also uh, a little bit on uh, the support engagement with WSO2. Um, and also what we envisage uh, as uh, a future prospects uh, with uh, WSO2. Uh, I will be touch basing on this a little bit. And then, uh, of course, uh, we can open the floor for a, a bit of uh, questions and answers, time permitting. Uh, so about Etisalat. Etisalat is um, the pioneer telecom service provider in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, it's headquartered out of Abu Dhabi and it serves all the seven Emirates of the UAE. Uh, it was founded in uh, October 1976 and it has been growing ever since. Uh, the vision of Etisalat is to drive the digital future uh, to empower society. So as you can see from the vision statement itself, uh, the digital footprint is uh, uh, quite important to Etisalat. Uh, and there's a lot of emphasis uh, in this area, in the digital arena. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of transformations that are ongoing right now. And we'll uh, see a story of one of those uh, transformations that have happened recently. Um, Etisalat also uh, is the largest telecom service provider in the Middle East with uh, 156 million customers across. Uh, it operates in 16 countries across the Middle East, Asia and Africa. Uh, and it's the most valuable brand in the Middle East with a portfolio value of over 10 billion US dollars. Um, for three years straight now, Etisalat has won the most valuable consumer brand in the Middle East and Africa. And uh, it is the first telecom operator in the Middle East and North Africa region to launch the first commercial 5G wireless network. Within the UAE, we have uh, more than 11.6 million consumers and they're growing steadily. Um, Etisalat also enabled Abu Dhabi to be the first capital in the world to be fully connected with the highest speed fiber optics. And um, as far as 5G is concerned, uh, Etisalat covers more than 90% of the households in UAE. And uh, recently in 2021, uh, we, uh, Etisalat won the strongest brand in the Middle East and Africa region. And um, Etisalat boasts of the fastest mobile network on the planet. Now, <clears throat> Moving on to Smiles, what is Smiles? Smiles is, um, it's a brand, it's a program mm -hmm. uh, which has two components. One is a mobile application and the other one is, uh, of course, the loyalty engine that powers it. And uh, initially we started off as a rewards uh, platform uh, targeting Etisalat consumers only. Uh, but ever since it has grown into a multifaceted, um, very large uh, 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 engagement platform, uh, with a lifestyle flavor uh, uh, with it uh, as well. So um, on the offerings that we have on Smiles, uh, basically you have uh, you get amazing deals, buy one, get one's discount and cashback offers on lifestyle brands. Uh, you can earn points and redeem points uh, either within Etisalat or across 4,600 part outlets in the UAE. Um, you can purchase vouchers and discount coupons uh, across different uh, uh, verticals of entertainment, shopping, dining, travel, services, wellness, and so on. Uh, and very recently, uh, Smiles engaged and or rather embarked on uh, the food delivery uh, aspect of things, uh, which I, uh, we believe was uh, the need of the hour with this pandemic that was going around. People were not very happy uh, or very reluctant to go to restaurants uh, to dine. So um, we embarked on the food delivery. So for those of you all who are familiar with uh, the likes of Uber Eats uh, and uh, other such applications, Smiles does the same thing as well now on top of whatever it was doing earlier. Uh, so we've got 3000 plus restaurants that you can order from and we are growing this uh, as much as possible, as fast as possible uh, over the next few months. And uh, there's a lot of exclusive and personalized offers uh, enabled uh, through market intelligence uh, using AI uh, and personalization. 
And just to speak about some numbers on Smiles, uh, we've got a 2.6 million um, uh, active user base uh, who are using the app. We've got 200,000 plus daily users who are interacting uh, on the app. And uh, this itself uh, will speak about the volumes of transactions uh, that uh, uh, we can expect. And uh, it goes without saying that it needs to be managed effectively. Um, these users over a period of time up to now have saved over 500 million plus uh, dirhams uh, in saving uh, by using the uh, Smiles application and uh, enjoying its benefits. Uh, and there's a points bank of 130 million plus dirhams um, year on year, uh, uh, which is uh, available for uh, earning and uh, redemption. And also, uh, we have a very diverse customer segment uh, base uh, within us. Uh, of course, the long reach of Etisalat subscriber base also helps in this. So ranging from Emiratis to white collar professionals to single professionals and youth segments and so on, uh, are very much uh, with us on the Smiles app. And a brief on how this works. Basically, uh, you can earn points, you can redeem points, and you can do so much more. Uh, I, I actually would uh, ask uh, all of you, request all of you to download the Smiles app and uh, see what you can uh, use, what you, how you can use it. Uh, so we've got two banks in terms of earning points. We've got two affiliated banks, which we have issued co-branded credit cards from. And so every spend you do on the uh, cards, uh, you, you accumulate points. Uh, within Etisalat, if you're, if you're paying your uh, bills or you're doing a recharge on your prepaid uh, number, uh, for every one uh, dirham spent, uh, you earn one point. Um, also, for online food ordering, you can use your credit card and pay for your food delivery, uh, and you will earn points on that. You can shop using uh, partner vouchers, uh, cash vouchers, discount coupons, and so on for which you will earn points when you use your credit card or debit card. Um, and as simple as referring a friend onto the Smiles program could earn you points. And these same points you can actually redeem uh, to buy vouchers and discount coupons, uh, to pay your Ethisalat bills or to purchase any kind of um, Ethisalat products or services. Uh, you can uh, use your points to uh, um, purchase online food, uh, uh, do online food ordering. Uh, and also, uh, you can uh, use the various production services that are available within the Smiles eShop uh, using your points. You can book your airline tickets through our affiliated travel partners. Um, you can get hefty discounts using your points. Uh, also, you can book your car insurance uh, through our affiliated insurance uh, partners uh, and so on. So you can earn points, you can redeem points uh, through these mechanisms, and there is so much more. Uh, which you can see, uh, I would request again uh, to download the Smiles app and uh, have a look. So about the Smiles partner verticals, uh, this is a non-exhaustive list that we have. Um, you can see some of uh, some big names in uh, terms of brands. So we've got shopping, fine dining, casual dining, entertainment. Uh, we've got online shopping, uh, wellness, travel, home entertainment services, and so on and so forth. Now. The Smiles program does not benefit only the consumers of the application, but uh, because of the strong brand equity that Etisalat has, the, the uh, reach to Etisalat subscriber base, um, uh, the high spending power of Etisalat's customers, uh, and the rest of the ecosystem that we have, which provides uh, analytics through big data and uh, uh, so many other um, uh, possibilities the partners also can actually benefit uh, from the SMILES program. Um, just to take you through a little bit on the journey that we've had so far, um, uh, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna go through every single thing, but the main points. Uh, so in November, 2014 is when we first launched our Etisalat Rewards platform. Uh, this was a very minuscule application targeting only the consumer base. The reach was not very uh, large or long. Uh, but we started off uh, here in November 2014. Before that, it was outsourced to a different company. Uh, and then over the period of time, we uh, did a lot of enhancements, uh, mini revamps and so on, introduced new aspects to the program. Uh, and then in May 2017 uh, is when we actually uh, launched the Smiles program, where we built a dedicated uh, mobile application for the Smiles users or for the rewards users. 
Uh, and uh, we built it, of course, on top of the existing technology that we had because of the stringent timelines that we had. Um, but we refactored the existing application. We refactored the code. We uh, built it up uh, and uh, uh, opened a lot of new uh, things wherein, uh, other than just the rewards aspect, we brought in the marketplace uh, aspect also to it. Uh, so all the lifestyle brands and things came, started coming in uh, at this point. And then in April of 2019, um, we opened up Smiles for everyone. So earlier it was only for Smiles uh, consumers, I mean, uh, the FSLR consumers. Uh, but uh, in April 2019, we opened it up for everyone, even including the small and medium sized business users, the enterprise users, uh, and even uh, non ethisalat users. So you, you, you didn't really necessarily have to have a ethisalat SIM card to download the app. It would work on anything. Even if you had an international number, it would work. And then in uh, August of 2020, um, we launched, uh, we replatformed the entire uh, loyalty engine that was powering Smiles because uh, the business roadmap was very ambitious. Uh, over, over this period of time, we saw how uh, the customers were growing, the transaction volumes were increasing. And in order to sustain that growth and in order to uh, achieve the business roadmap, uh, somewhere around 2019, in the beginning, we decided that uh, this architecture is no longer scalable uh, it, it, on the long run. It, while it has serviced as well, on the long run, it may not uh, really sustain the growth. So we decided to replatform the entire application uh, to achieve more scalability, uh, a robust architecture, and uh, to enhance our time to market uh, with our releases. Um, going on to the functional overview, uh, basically during this replatforming, um, uh, we, most of the features and functionalities remain the same. However, what we did is um, we uh, broke down the monolithic application that we had uh, into microservices, and we, we followed a design domain, uh, design-driven domain, sorry, a domain-driven design approach uh, in in realizing this, and uh, uh, we built it in a way where um, uh, the the modules would be less tightly coupled, or rather loosely coupled, and uh, it would fit uh, uh, a microservices-based architecture. And um, on the overall gamut of things, uh, it would work much better uh, and it would be more future-proof. So <clears throat> we basically wanted to have a state-of-the-art solution with the best of the breed technology stack. So um, this is what we looked for uh, in order to achieve this. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, obviously, with a microservices-based architecture, um, we, are, we, we, we are looking at uh, a containerized solution uh, because it's very highly scalable. You can scale horizontally, you can scale vertically up to certain limits, uh, and of course, then license come into play. Uh, but uh, um, uh, it was the need uh, that we had, uh, and we needed the application uh, to be extremely secure. Uh, this is where uh, you know uh, the next component that we were looking at. The APIs and identity management uh, was crucial, uh, which we uh, got from WSO2. Uh, we needed to have centralized rules management. Uh, we needed to have proper monitoring alarms and alerts, uh, role-based administration and support, DevOps uh, in terms of continuous integration and continuous deployment, comprehensive logging and auditing. And one of the biggest changes for us uh, in this whole exercise was uh, the move from relational database management systems to NoSQL databases, such as uh, in this case, it's actually MongoDB. And it was a big change, but um, uh, when we put all the uh, building blocks together uh, in the blueprint, uh, this is exactly what we were looking for. So in the interest of time, I will not go into details of each one of these things, but however, if there are any questions, uh, I can take it later on. So this is the engine. Uh, that power smiles, which underwent the transformation, the revamp. So here you can see within the OpenShift uh, cluster, Red Hat OpenShift cluster, we've got our microservices deployed. We've got um, our business rules engine, uh, Decision Central, along with uh, uh, Kai server. Uh, and we have uh, AMQ for message brokering. Of course, we've got the WSO2 API manager and uh, the identity server. Uh, we've got uh, different databases on MongoDB uh, serving different microservices uh, and a reporting database uh, where we do change, which gets populated through change data capture using Debezium and Kafka streams. And um, 
On this side, you can see all the Etisalat systems uh, that uh, the application connects to. And on this side, all the uh, bulk of the partners and uh, uh, other applications that uh, we connect to uh, and so on and so forth. So um, just a very high level of uh, just to show you the complexity uh, of this implementation uh, uh, at a very high level. Um, next, uh, if we go into um, the API manager itself, uh, we wanted a one-stop gateway uh, where we can uh, ensure that uh, all the systems that connect to us uh, are controlled. Uh, uh, the, the information exchange that happens between these systems are secure, uh, and only the authorized uh, uh, consumers of those APIs are able to uh, connect and use those APIs. So. Um, these are the main components uh, within the WSO2 API manager. Um, you, you, you can see the uh, publishing and management part where you can design, publish, uh, design, create, and publish uh, the APIs. And uh, on the developer portal side, uh, you have um, uh, you can do quick tests and you can basically uh, subscribe the consumers to those APIs. Uh, and of course, uh, the core components here, the broker, the key manager, where you generate the keys and secrets. Uh, for authentication and authorization, uh, API core manager, traffic manager, and so on. Uh, and of course, uh, you've got the uh, monitoring and analysis, uh, which gives you uh, real good insights as to how the APIs are performing, uh, and so on. Um, so these were some of the capabilities that we were looking at in our transformation of Smiles. Uh, routing, security, throttling, metering, third-party integration, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we found that WSO2 had uh, all of these capabilities and some uh, nice features that we uh, found or we saw, uh, especially in the throttling area, uh, you can actually configure uh, a threshold value of um, a few seconds, uh, whatever you might need in the event that your backend systems don't respond on time uh, because of some glitch or some other issue, uh, some latency on the backend systems. Uh, um, you can configure uh, 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 a time period uh, as to when uh, WSO2 should suspend this API in order to protect the rest of the system uh, from uh, you know, uh, being uh, overloaded. So uh, this is a nice uh, feature that uh, we're using. Uh, and also in terms of third party integration, uh, it, uh, the identity and access management uh, uh, part works well with third party um, uh, identity providers, which we are also using uh, in our overall uh, landscape. Uh, and um, these are a few screenshots of um, uh, our dashboards, our, our, how you uh, generate and store the keys and secrets, uh, how you can subscribe uh, your uh, consumers to your APIs. And also, of course, uh, you can see the lifecycle management of APIs uh, through this setup. Um, in terms of benefits that we have um, uh, achieved uh, through uh, the implementation of WSO2 API Manager and Identity Server, uh, in our legacy setup, we didn't really have an API manager. So when you talk about the growth of the volumes of transactions, uh, you, you basically have APIs uh, which are exposed to different systems and there's no real control of how uh, these APIs are being called, uh, there's no throttling, there's no real service discovery. Uh, a lot of those things are not there. Security-wise, it was uh, not that great. But now, uh, with WSO2 uh, API Manager, we ensure that the underlying microservices APIs are secure and are accessible only by the authorized consumers. Um, also, uh, for our administration portal, uh, we didn't have any standard protocol uh, to place uh, in place to uh, ensure the authenticity of who's logging in and so on. We used to do it through a lot of code changes and stuff like that, which was not the best uh, practice uh, uh, as far as we were concerned. Uh, but then uh, along with uh, uh, WSO2, we're now using OAuth 2.0 uh, in authenticating and using uh, 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 logging in the users. Uh, we, it works together with Red Hat SSO Keycloak um, uh, to provide federated logins uh, for the users. So, um, and all the other systems uh, in Ethisalat uh, that we have that the Smiles uh, setup or the loyalty engine connects to uh, is uh, it basically uses simple username and password to authenticate. But now 
uh, <clears throat> we rely uh, or the systems now rely on an OAuth token that is uh, generated and stored as part of their profile. Uh, also, uh, managing the access of these dependent systems earlier was achieved uh, through um, change of code. But now uh, it's done very easily uh, through configuration using WSO2. Um, apart from this, um, currently, uh, WSO2 API Manager is supporting 13 plus APIs, which are the microservices based APIs. But this 13 may be very small in number, as you can see here. But it actually, within these 13 core APIs, there are 250 plus RESTful operations that are being supported. Um, it controls over 20 plus systems who are subscribed to the above APIs. Uh, and also, uh, currently, uh, it is serving more than 6 million API call requests on a daily basis. Earlier, it was very much less than this. But now, as of now, we are having, we're looking at 6 million API call requests on a daily average. And it's still growing. And we still can manage without any issue uh, because of the way it has been set up. Um, also serving 2,000 plus transactions per minute and growing uh, because of all the new features that are being added on and so on. Um, now, one of the business benefits that we wanted to achieve through uh, this entire revamp uh, of the platform uh, was enhanced time to market. So um, because to be in the game, to be uh, ahead of our competition, we need to be able to release uh, uh, features uh, to the market as soon as possible. And we need to do it very efficiently and very effectively. Um, one of the core uh, areas that organizations pay dearly for, which uh, costs organizations a lot, is when it comes to the different systems integrations. So when you have to integrate with external systems, with internal systems, this takes a lot of time because the handshake uh, uh, that, that has to happen goes through multiple iterations and you have to do changes on either side sometimes and it becomes a bit of a nightmare. Uh, but with the API manager, we were able to achieve this. And I'm happy to say that um, uh, after this implementation, uh, we've actually reduced or enhanced the time to market by almost 40%. Uh, of course, it, uh, it, it's attributed not only to WSO2 API manager. There are other things also that went in with this architecture and with the planning. But uh, WSO2 API manager is one of the core, uh, or I would say cornerstones uh, uh, in achieving uh, uh, this enhanced time to market. Um, as far as the identity server is concerned, um, I think uh, in the interest of time, uh, I'll not go through this entire thing. This is uh, a screenshot that I picked up from our architecture blueprint. Uh, so um, in certain cases, we are using uh, WSO2 identity server uh, to do the authentication as well as the authorization. Uh, of customers, but in certain cases, especially with our um, uh, administration portal, uh, we do a federated login uh, through Red Hat SSO, uh, which already has an integration with our Ethisalat corporate IDP, which is the Ethisalat Active Directory. So we do a federated login here. In this case, uh, the authentication is done by Red Hat SSO uh, with Keycloak. Uh, and the uh, WSO2 identity server basically stores the uh, roles. So the authorization uh, of the access management part is done uh, with the identity server. Um, just to touch base a little bit on the WSO2 support. Now, uh, typically, a lot of people use uh, WSO2 in itself is a uh, it's an open source platform, and a lot of people uh, use that uh, use it as an open source pl uh, platform. Uh, but in our case, uh, we actually opted to go for uh, um, a subscription model uh, because uh, one, uh, we are dealing with an enterprise grade application. Uh, two, it's a customer facing application and it has to be uh, up 24 by 7. So uh, we uh, didn't want to take the risk uh, of not getting support, not getting proper security uh, patch updates and upgrades. Uh, so we went with this. Uh, and I'm happy to say that uh, for whatever the tickets that we have created so far, uh, I haven't seen a single breach in the SLAs. And it, uh, the support has been very timely. Um, and also, uh, the support staff have been very knowledgeable. Uh, multiple iterations have been avoided. Uh, what I mean by multiple iterations is that sometimes when you, um, when you call a call center, be it a bank or be it some other service provider, uh, sometimes you raise the ticket or you, you log in your complaint. 
uh, one agent takes it and on the next day another agent uh, calls you to follow up or you have to follow up and it's another agent and you have to probably repeat yourself all over again uh, and it really gets frustrating but in this case um, this situation is completely avoided and uh, most of our issues or clarifications that we required uh, were resolved or provided uh, in, in a very short span of time uh, and also uh, the, the team uh, support team has been very courteous and professional and i must say that um, uh, they've supported us beyond the sls they've supported us beyond working times and so on uh, uh, and uh, i'm very thankful to wso2 for that kind of support that we have received um, in terms of future engagements um, we're looking at migrating to the cloud uh, currently we have uh, we have our setup on premise uh, so we're working on some regulatory aspects uh, right now uh, in terms of moving to the crowd we're looking at different approaches um, uh, also uh, the application is already built uh, to support software as a service uh, we are um, uh, we are looking at, at having a separate um, uh, instance uh, on the cloud uh, to do uh, software as a service and we can provide loyalty as a service to uh, potential uh, clients and uh, there are a couple of discussions that are going on with a couple of potential clients right now uh, and also uh, there are other streams in the digital domain which uh, currently we are undergoing uh, which are undergoing some discussions uh, together with WSO2 and uh, we see uh, and we hope that um, uh, we will be able to work together with WSO2 uh, on these aspects and many more uh, in the future. 